Uh, our next speaker is uh, Vieroš Kaplan. Uh, Vieroš started his career as a Python developer and then he gradually moved uh, to the operation and now he is the DevOps guy. And today he is going to talk about how to write a Kubernetes operator in Python. So please give a welcome to the Vieroš. Okay, thank you, uh, Hello, my name is Vieroš. I'm a freelance system administrator. I'm doing some, well, I'm doing uh, the last, uh, last few years, I'm working with Kubernetes. And I would like to talk about Kubernetes and Python operator. Well, I have, uh, I have, uh, have some Twitter account, so you can tag me and so on. As I told you, I'm uh, in the few last year, every, Every, content, every application or, or some workloads of our, our software of our customers move to Kubernetes. So it looks uh, like this way. So when I open my computer, I'm afraid there will be Kubernetes inside. So uh, probably everybody knows Kubernetes, but just short recapitulation in the, in the uh, Beginning, there were some containers. It looked like this way. You have some containers, you put them to some computers, and it ran, or it, it uh, breaks, it falls. It, restart, it was restarting the computers, and uh, nobody, takes, nobody takes care about the c containers, but you have to do it manually. And then some container orchestrators appeared, like Kubernetes, and Kubernetes for us, it uh, just uh, makes uh, some order, it uh, create a, it just, uh, it uh, says, it uh, just puts the containers on some machines like this. We have some servers, we run containers on them and it looks really nice. Well, the question is, uh, I would like to start, for example, hello world in, in, uh, hello world in Python in Kubernetes, what should I do? Uh, if you read the, uh, Documentation, you will, they will say, well, you can't start container in Kubernetes. We have to start pod. Okay, so let's start pod. Well, to, to start pod, you have to write some YAML file. Oh no, YAML, okay. So then I Googled through the documentation and I found, well, I have to create some pod. I have to take some image. I have to mount some volumes like the volume of the application source, put some commands and, and it's all. So it's pretty a big part of YAML to just start Hello World in Python, is it? Also it's, uh, oh no, it's not the good way. So, uh, for, uh, and this is only Hello World. So maybe if we would like to start, for example, Elasticsearch in Kubernetes, have anybody start, tried to start manually Elasticsearch in Kubernetes? One, two. Was it a hard? Was it easy or was it a hard way? Okay. Well, nobody, nobody confirms it was easy. Well, uh, for, uh, for example, for Elasticsearch, it's my favorite example. To start Elasticsearch cluster, you have to start some ports, uh, some uh, stateful sets to bind some volumes, and it's it's complicated, and you have to take care about it. So the nice people at I think it was. Coreos, I am not sure about the company. They invented uh, some. They invented some concepts, and it, it, they invented concept of uh, operator. So please do, do, don't read this; it's too long. Well, how do operator? How do operators in Kubernetes work? This is a image. When I, for example, I have some content. Let's imagine I, I own a port and I want to move some containers from some one end of the port to the, uh, another one. Usually I don't want to do it manually. I have to, so this is the container I would like to manage and I would like to hire an operator. So the guy inside this one, this is the oper uh, he is the operator. And I will just uh, take the operator and tell him, well, I would like to move this, uh, this container somewhere else and it works. Uh, it works in a very similar way in the Kubernetes. When I want to, for example, set up Elasticsearch, 
or some database or something even more complicated. I would just uh, take an operator, the leave, leave human being, and tell, her, tell, tell him or her, please start for me operator and start for, for me a cluster of Elasticsearch. The, the human being just create, uh, deploys some ports or daemon sets, I don't know, some magic Kubernetes objects, and it will, it will work. And uh, the concept of Kubernetes operator is that you will just replace this guy or girl by, uh, by a code, by some software, and that's all. So we don't, don't need the human being anymore. We, use, we just use software and it uh, usually works 24 hours a day and so on. So how to, uh, how to start with uh, operators in pure Python? How to start uh, working with them? Uh, in theory, oper operator or is a software. It just connects to to the Kubernetes API. For example, we start, when we started with operators, we just, uh, we, have, we had some ingress objects in Kubernetes, some objects, and we wanted to be sure that all this, these objects are in some correct state. So everything I need to do, I just uh, Create, I just started Python, connected uh, to the Kubernetes API. So this is API. Please don't read this, it's too complicated. And then I just asked Kubernetes, please tell me about every ingress object I had or you had. So Kubernetes sent, sent a notification to me and I, they sent, uh, Kubernetes sent to me some events and then I was doing some work on the, on the objects. This is pretty easy. You can do it uh, in every language. The very first operators uh, was created probably in Go, but uh, there are, I've, or maybe last day, I have been told that there are even some operators in uh, Bash. You can use Python. You can use, for operator, you can use everything or every language or every tool which can connect to Kubernetes API. Well, I consider this to be working, but to be an ugly. There, uh, we are in Python, so there must be uh, some uh, better way. As you, we know, in the Zen of Python, there is a uh, line saying beautiful is better than ugly. There should be some Pythonic way how to, do, how to create an uh, operator. Well, how to start? I, uh, I did some research and I found there is some uh, Kubernetes, there is some Python module called COPF, it's Kubernetes Operators Framework. It is uh, on GitHub, it has some really nice documentation. It was originally created for Zalando, and uh, currently, as far as I know, Zalando don't need the operator framework, and uh, so the original author is working for it in his time. And, it, and uh, it's really, and uh, COP provides a really nice Pythonic way how to work with Kubernetes objects. So let's start. The very, base, the very basic uh, concept in COPF, uh, there are hooks and handlers. How, how it looks, uh, I would like to, I create some object or some function, some callable, for example, some handler, which I would like to be called when some object uh, is created. So I create object, I, I would like to print, to print hello world. And uh, then I use COP uh, annotation, which, uh, and I would like to ask COP, please start, uh, register, you register yourself when some object is created, please uh, tell me. And that's all. So at this moment, you have probably everything you know about, you need to know about COP. And now I will start to show some examples. Well. Uh, I prepared some really short demo, so, so short demo about how to, how to run Python scripts in Kubernetes uh, using an operator. So it's already on GitHub, so you can use it or abuse it. If it breaks, please keep both pieces. Well, and uh, how do operators uh, usually work? There are many, there are 
more approaches. The usually the most common common approach to Kubernetes operator is that uh, I will we create some custom some custom resources. For example, I would like to create a resource which will be called Python app. Uh, I would like to, and uh, when I create a resource called Python app, I would like to be to be to some Python con some container with Python to be, I would should be created. The Python script should be started, run, and then its result should be reported back to the operation. Uh, Kubernetes out of the box doesn't uh, doesn't have an object called Python app. But uh, there is a really nice uh, feature in Kubernetes. It's called, well, it's called custom resource definition, which I can use. So my idea about the Python app is that me, as a Kubernetes user, which I don't know anything about Kubernetes uh, operators, I would just like to create a Python, uh, Python app object or resource. It's here. Then, well, uh, when I start, uh, so w when the object is created, or maybe before, it doesn't matter, I would, I would li just like to start COPF operator. The COPF, it's when I install COPF, I would just like run, I would just run a Python, a pip install COPF. It will install into my virtual env, and then I would just like to start, I would just create a main pi, and uh, it will just, operator will start to handle the objects. Well, what should happen? I will just create Python app, Python app the hello world. The operator should create a new, new Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes job for me. The job is in a standard object. Then, uh, because the job is a standard object in Kubernetes, uh, it would, uh, the Kubernetes, uh, the job controller, it's not my, my part, it's Kubernetes pa uh, part of responsibility. It will just uh, create a new pod running the container. The pod then runs the Python code, and uh, when it ends, it should report back to my application that it's, that it's created. So, pretty easy. So, how should we do this? So, Fran. So at the beginning, when I, uh, it's common for, oper for all operators, when I would like to start uh, to create a new customer custom resource, I, there is a special object called custom resource definition. It's, uh, this is a short, way, short uh, version. If we want, we can look for that, custom Deployment, custom resource, it looks something like this. Is it? Yes. Uh, usually you write this only once uh, during, your, during the lifetime of your, of your application. I just say, well, dear Kubernetes, I would like you to, to know object called uh, Python app, and that's all. And now I can do, so I will just apply that. Q control, apply, deployments. The object is there. And I can ask, please tell me something about Python apps. Okay, once more. Please explain me something, uh, what do you know about Python app? Well, so by creating custom resource definition, now Kubernetes knows that uh, you can store Python app object, Python, uh, Python app resource into Kubernetes. Very nice. So, what should we do next? It would be nice. Ju just we should we can now create a, uh, our Hello World application. It's pretty easy. Okay. No? So I have another some manifests here. Test manifests. Hello World. So. Here, I just create a, some new 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 object called Python app. This looks uh, in the really, really similar to some custom some common Kubernetes resources. I just use this one, and the object the uh, Python app uh, I would like to run. It would, I just stored it into config map at the moment. So I prepared some 
application which says hello world, then it sleeps for 10 seconds and they says goodbye world. So, okay, so let's create the object. So, cube control, apply, test manifests, hello world. Well, so, well, so I, cre uh, I just created a new object or new resource in Kubernetes. We ca you can see it here already in the, it's an object named hello world. It has some fields. We can ask, please tell me something about my Python app. Python app, hello world, it's there. So, great. So still everything works. And now I just stored some object, in some resource into Kubernetes. And it, uh, so it's the store, but the object itself, it's still dead. Nobody is using that. So now I, uh, I should provide, uh, I should create some Python code using COPF and uh, the code should handle the, should handle the objects. So, well, in this, so I again created a new function. The function is called on upgrade. It's my name. And I says, please say to COPF, please call this function when the object is created. The API group, API version and API plural, it, uh, these are strings uh, referring to my uh, custom resource. So there should be our company name, v1 and Python app. So when I create a new, new, new object of Python app, this, uh, this uh, Python code would be called. It's pretty easy. It's much easier than calling the, than handling with the Python with the Kubernetes API manually. Well, what's, re what's really uh, comfortable or convenient with, with COPF, it uh, holds some shortcuts, some uh, sh shortcut functions for us to, for example, for emitting events. So when I, when the object is created, I can emit event called, uh, or well, I can emit just event uh, relating to Python object the, no, the Kubernetes object, sorry. And it says, well, the, jo the, the, the app has been found, it was created. Okay. Well, so this is, uh, this is the basic idea how the hooks works. In fact, uh, I would like to, as I told you, I would like to create some, Python, some job based on the Python, uh, Python uh, application object. So. Okay, so I just created a new function called ensure job here. The function, uh, all the functions in uh, code by cop has some parameters. You, uh, there has some parameter like body, which says, uh, which contains uh, body of the Kubernetes resource. And in our function, I just ensure that we have some, uh, we have a job for this uh, Python, uh, Python application. So it's easy. I just get some annotations, another metadata. I will just check if there is a name of job in the annotations. And when we don't have job for the object, for the, when we still don't have Python, uh, we still don't, don't have Kubernetes job for the Python app application object, we will just create that. So let's check applications. So what means that we would like to create an object? It's pretty easy. Again, uh, er, uh, if, you know, if you use Kubernetes, then you know that everything in Kubernetes is a resource. Uh, you usually put some YAMLs there. You can put uh, also some JSONs. So when I would like to create some new object or some new resource for Kubernetes, I will just create body of the object, put some metadata there, put some specification, and then I will just put, put my object into Kubernetes. So I called, I got batch API. This is uh, some raw, Kuberne raw Kubernetes API. I just put some object there. Okay. What's really uh, convenient, 
in Kubernetes, there is, I don't know if you know about that, I was quite surprised, surprised when I found that there is a, a concept of owner reference. When I create some objects, for example, pods, uh, these pods uh, are created from deployments usually, and when you, when you drop the parent object, the deployment, you would like to uh, pods to be dropped too. Uh, it's internally in Kubernetes, in API server, it's handled by owner references. And in, again, in uh, COP, there is an easy way how to set uh, owner references. So I just, when I, I was creating the job, here, I created a job body. I just uh, asked Kopf, please adopt this object for me. And uh, this one line sets owner reference for the object. No. So, and then I created a new object. Well, okay, we can, maybe we can try that. So, let's check. We have uh, Python application Hello World, it's there. Uh, in the on the right, pa uh, right one, right part, I have a list of Python, Python applications here, and I have a list of running pods in the, on the right side, on the top. And now I, would, I, I should start the COPF. So, I'd, what happened? Okay. Uh, make run. I don't remember the exact command. So, now COPF was started. I started just the code I shown, and you can see new job has been created, new application has been created, new, new pod has been created. Okay, where it is. And you can see that the, the application was really started, it said hello world, then it said goodbye world. So we just created a new job, we just created a new Python, new port with Python by creating our custom, uh, custom Python, a custom resource object. Well, okay, and what's next? The, when, we cre when we create a job, when we create a job in Python, job uh, object, or job resource in Kubernetes, it, it starts some pods, and then when the pods ends, the job itself turns into the completed state. So, uh, and we, it would be nice to modify our custom, uh, custom resource, the Python app, to, to say completed. Well, it's already done. It says completed. How, uh, how we achieve this? It's pretty easy. Uh, it's possible in, in COPF to handle e events not only of our custom resource objects, it's also possible to uh, handle ob events of some, uh, of some other objects. So I asked COPF, uh, please watch objects of jobs, of type jobs. So it's, it has API group, batch, version one, job, and it's possible to Handle not uh, to ask of to f get uh, events only of some objects. In the beginning, I don't know if it's, it can be well. It, it can be shown. It, it wasn't shown on the previous uh, slides. But uh, I, when I created a new job, I put some labels uh, to the job because it's e because it's easier uh, to filter on them. So let's let's say or let's show. Group control, edit, job, hello world. And you can see in, meta, in metadata of the job, there was, there was a value hello world. So, okay. So I asked Kopf, please watch, uh, please watch events uh, of the job. Well, and then again, uh, I can uh, check if the job is completed or if the job is failed, when the job is completed, uh, when the job is completed, this my, I would just uh, modify my uh, my Python application object to be co to say it's completed. When it's fa when it fails, I just modify it and it will be and the object, the Python ap application resource to be to to be failed and that's all. Well, okay. 
for, modif for modifying, there is, a there is a Kubernetes API called patch, and uh, I, I just can ask uh, Kubernetes, please change some, uh, please, please change some fields on our object. So I just uh, put there, job status is completed, job, is, job finished at, is at some date, and you can see it's already there. The application, uh, the job was completed, and I put some data. Well, we can try to run it once more. Escape, so cube code. I will drop it, make drop application. So I just run cube control delete. And you can see that uh, Python app is dropped and uh, the pod because uh, pod is dropped too because the pod was dependent on the python app so let's make start app again i did cube control apply my pod is running you, we, we can see the we can see the logs in real time it says goodbye world and in few seconds the applicate uh, copf here, got on the left, bottom left, got uh, information about the job complete about the job completion. So it updated the Python appli Python application custom resource objects, and that's all. So it works. What's really uh, convenient for me that uh, all this uh, Python co all this Python code uh, to, for handling some custom resources. And leak some events. It was uh, only in the, it was under 200 lines of code, which looks really impressive uh, to me. Uh, when we uh, tried to do some really complex workflows, we got about to about 300 lines, which was still, which we, we were still able to understand. So, well. And what's really nice, uh, I showed only the very basic bits of the COP. What can COP, does, uh, what can COP do for us uh, uh, also? There is some built-in change detection. Uh, COP, uh, when we handle some object in COP, COP, ca COP can save uh, the object state into some annotations. So uh, when I handle some change, I can, when I handle change of the object, uh, I can ask of please tell me what, uh, what the object looked before. So I can just ask for differences. What's really nice on COP, uh, I can ask for some delaying, uh, delaying uh, jobs. There are timers. And what's really convenient for us when we, when we are doing some development or uh, COP can retry the job. We can ask, uh, when I have some handler, I can ask, I can cast, ask COP, well, it doesn't work at the moment. Please retry in 10 seconds. So I just raise uh, temporary error or some another, another exception and COP will start the next run for me, which, which we found really convenient. Well, there are many more bits in COP. There are, for example, some demons when you create some new object you can accompany the object with your Python thread in COPF. Uh, COPF itself can be run, for example, in more instances, so you can run in some sort of uh, high availability with that. And uh, there are probably many more features I don't know about still. But uh, at this moment, even with very basic COPF usage, it uh, saves us a lot of time, so we are using that. Well, it's there. Well, and that's all from me at the moment. So maybe is there. So thank you very much for the talk. Probably. We have a few questions. Okay. So uh, what uh, happens with the deploy deployed apps when you update your custom Python app? Are they restarted immediately? Well, it's a very good question. N no. Uh, uh, with the code which is on GitHub, uh, the Python app isn't restarted. But uh, if you want to happen this, it's pretty easy. In uh, COP, you can say, please, when, some when uh, the custom Python app is changed, 
please destroy the old job and create a new one, and you are there. So I think it's possible, but it doesn't work at the moment. But it can be done, okay? Uh, when to use Kubernetes with or without Docker? Well, it's a good question. Uh, in fact, I'm, uh, I'm not running Docker for two years because uh, when I started with Docker, when I started, I got a new laptop, there was Fedora, and Docker doesn't work at Fedora with, with the time. So on my laptop, we use Podman, I use Podman, uh, and uh, at, the, we, at the production, we don't use uh, Docker because uh, we don't have to. Kubernetes uh, doesn't, the current version of Kubernetes uh, uh, doesn't need Docker anymore, so we don't use Docker. So I have, uh, but uh, well, if you have an legacy, if, if you have an legacy installation of Kubernetes using Docker, just keep with that. If you have a new Kuber new uh, new installation, for example, by Cube Admin or uh, K3S, you probably you probably will run without Docker and uh, it will work too. In fact, it, it doesn't matter if you run with or without Docker because both. Uh, the Kubernetes, because uh, all the container runtimes which Kubernetes uses should use OCI specification, and that it's not important today, nowadays. I hope it's the answer. Uh, thank you. The last one is more like a comment, so I, I'm not sure if you want to reflect on that. Well, I don't know. Well, I haven't used Windows for the last 20 years, so I'm probably not the person who you should ask this. Sorry. Okay, so we are, thank you for your talk, uh, and now we have a lunch break, so uh, see you in one hour. Okay, thank you for attending. Mikrobit je programovateľný počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomé. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabeho. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládam tak, že ňou zatraciem, alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc z ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.